Hey friends, thank you for joining me for another episode of the Draw Along Show. My name is Kyle Webster. I'm your host for this show that we do twice a week, Wednesdays and Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern here on Adobe Live. Now, I'm going to be following the live chat at behance.net slash live. So if you happen to be watching on Twitter or YouTube, head on over to behance.net slash live. If you don't have a Behance account, don't worry, it's totally free. You sign up and then I can read the chat and we can all hang out together. And you can make suggestions for what I'm going to draw at the end of the show, as well as ask me questions throughout the show. And that's what makes this really fun. It's an interactive, collaborative drawing show. Now, as always, we're going to start with a you draw it. That's a step-by-step -step drawing section of the show. Usually only takes about 10 minutes to draw something completely new and fun. And you can always watch these episodes back on YouTube or on Behance. And you can repeat these drawings to your heart's content, get them memorized, impress your friends. Listen, we've done over 140 episodes of the Draw Along Show. You just pick out a handful of your favorites and you could really, really have quite the drawing show of your own. What do you think about that? Just please don't take my job. Okay, I like what I do. I want to stick with it. Let's say hi to some folks who are here joining us right now. Steve, what's up, Steve? Steven, I see you. Nice to see you. Sam and Anna, hello. Mercurial. Umicorn and Stephanie, nice for you to join us as well. And Hamza, nice to see you. Einstein is here too. Wow. Einstein, it's a smart fellow right there. Folks, thanks for joining me here. Remember, you're going to have to have something to draw with for the show. Could be a pencil, a marker, a crayon. Could be a nice little pen. Or, you know, you might get a paper clip and just dip it in some mustard and draw with that. Totally up to you. Okay, I'm not going to judge. Uh, listen, we are going to get started today. It's important that we get cracking. Um, yesterday I was talking about boats. And I have a question for you. What did one ocean say to the other one? Nothing. It just waved. <laughs> Will they ever get better? The answer is no. All righty. Let's get to the business at hand, which is drawing. Okay. And you need your hand to draw with that, right? I'm using a Wacom stylus and I'm drawing in Photoshop. Sometimes I get asked that question, Kyle, how are you doing these drawings? So I'm working in Adobe Photoshop, got a Wacom stylus on a nice Wacom Cintiq, but you can do these drawings, like I said, with anything, pencil, marker, crayon, doesn't matter. That's the beautiful thing about this show. No fancy technology is required whatsoever. However, there are three things that are required every time we do these drawings, and they are a straight line, happened there. Can you see me now, folks? Can you see me now? I don't know what happened there. Hopefully you can see me. Um, all right, we're going to get started. I hope you all saw the intro there. If you want to do these drawings, you have to be able to do a straight line, a zigzag, or a curvilinear line, okay? Just like every episode. And I know you can do those three simple things. So to follow along, let us get cracking here. I was just saying we're about to draw a person. We haven't done a sporty person in a while. It's going to be a sporty person. Let's see if anybody can figure out what this person's doing. We're going to start with an upside down V like that. Bear in mind when you look at this V that the angle I've drawn is about a 90 degree angle there, right? And each of these lines are at about 45 degrees. Something to think about. Now we are going to travel on down this side here and this side here. These lines, if you will observe, are slightly longer than the first two lines. Slightly longer, are they not? We're going to repeat what we did up here down at the bottom. So we have just drawn a sort of gem-like shape, if you will. Okay. Now here, from this corner to that corner, we're just going to connect them 
and then draw another line just underneath it, okay? So this is our drawing so far. How's everybody doing out there? Uh, Steve says we're drawing a sporty, salty sea captain, and that would be something, wouldn't it? The sea captain hasn't made an appearance in a little while. Maybe he needs to come on back soon. What do you think, gang? Now up here, I'm going to do some curvilinear lines that are going to loop. And I want you to just watch what I do and then copy, okay? I'm looping in a circle. See that? I sort of drew a circle, but I looped my way through it. Loop, 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 loop. How loopy. I'll zoom in a bit closer here so you can see this. Down where we have this V shape, above it, I'm going to do a smaller V. And I'm following those same angles. See that? One, two. Following parallel with this line and parallel with that line. Travel up a ways so that you're just under this line here. And I'm traveling from the end of this line here, straight on up and just making a little dot. Same on this side, straight on up. And I'm making a little dot. And then right here, okay, doom. See that? It's kind of like a little dash, if you will, a little dash. Simple, we just drew a face. Look at where this eye is. I want you to travel to the left of it and make a little C curve. Travel to the right of this one and make another little C curve. And there we have a face. Why draw this at a 45 degree angle? Check out this, this is so convenient, keeping these angles. Because I'm gonna take that line and I'm just going to extend it. Okay, it's gonna come out like this. All right. Now, I extend that line, and then I break it slightly at a different angle. See that? We come down, we break it slightly at a different angle, and we travel straight on down. All right. And then I'm going to move back this way. Actually, sorry, I mean need to make that a little longer. There we go. Back this way, same angle as this. Angle slightly back this way. Okay, now observe, this line is not quite parallel with that, is it? Got an obtuse angle right there. Okay, see that, folks? From here, I'm going to travel back, and remember where our eye is here, okay? I'm going to drop just below the eye and over slightly and make myself a little target. See that? It's always a good idea to give yourself a target. Now, I can start from here and connect to here, or I can start from there and connect to there. I'm a lefty, so I'm gonna go this way. It's always easier for me to draw from right to left. If you're a righty, it's probably easier for you to draw from left to right. Something to think about. Right here, okay, where we have this diagonal line, we are going to draw a slight, that little line is very slight, they're very small, just coming out that way. See the angle there? Is it the same as this? No, not quite. And then from there, we're gonna take this line and we're gonna connect this point to this point. Okay, watch. Down we go and just let it kind of overlap. And then right here, we are going to do this. What did I draw there? I essentially took this shape and I drew it again right here next to it. Okay, one and two. All right, so those look very similar to one another, do they not? All right, now here, you're going to just draw a little line, and then one and two, and I'm gonna just overlap that. So this is kind of like a sideways V, and you got a couple of lines just underneath it, okay? What we drew there are two hands. Alrighty, now from this corner right here, we are going to draw an angle this way. This line is going to be pretty much the same length as that very long line. If you were to start from here and go all the way down to there, imagine we're doing that again, only this time we're angling in this direction. Okay, check it out. So same kind of line heading down in that direction. Okay. And then from here, 
I want you to just do this. You're going to draw a line back this way. Ta-da! Got it? And then you're going to, from here, draw a line that curves like that. A little C-curve. Okay? And then from here, you are going to draw a line slightly more vertical than this line. So slightly different angle. If you want to draw it, you know, parallel to that, you're still going to get a great, a great drawing. Don't worry about it. But I'm going to just change my angle slightly. And I'm going to stop right there. Okay? And I'm going to just come up this way. See, that's about a right angle again. Okay? Right above it, make another little line. And now we have this line that we've just drawn. Okay, I'm going to break that slightly. <clears throat> I'm not going to draw straight out this way, but I am going to change it slightly. There you go. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. I've got a frog in my throat. Got some allergies kicking in with the change of the seasons. I hope you will bear with me. All right, now, from here, I'm going to do a zigzaggy kind of a thing all the way through here. Here's our friend the zigzag. See that? One and two and three and four. You want to do a few more, a few less? Up to you. Not a big deal. Take this line, and we're going to extend it. All right, and it's going to come all the way down so that it's going to line up <clears throat> with this line, the line that separates the two hands, okay? So imagine I'm just going to drop down to here. Once again, we're talking about this wonderful thing, which is having a little target. See that? And I'm a lefty, so I'm drawing again left to right, okay? There we go. And here, I'm just going to angle out slightly like this and then back and then i'm going to draw up this way bum 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 okay right up there and draw a little line and right above here a little line angling down that way so hockey player says steve Steve, you nailed it. It's a field hockey player. That is what we are drawing today. Now, what's very convenient about this line is that I can simply do this. I can just draw it a little further down and draw another right angle and just angle it back this way. Okay. And we can do the same kind of foot that we did here. Right? Same kind of deal. And then I can come back this way and up that way. Same long sock, same line for the shoe. Now for this skirt, watch this, we're gonna do a pleated kind of a thing, okay? So I just connect from the waistline to each of these little zigzags. See how each of the zigzags has a point? top or bottom, we just connect those. That is a super easy trick. Out we go for the stick. Now here I'm going to do a curvilinear line. It's going to start straight and then curve, okay? And we wind up with a right angle if you were to look at this and that, okay? And then from here we just go straight out. Actually, I should probably do a slightly longer there we go round that out come back and yeah that's a little a little better you can be picky folks get that ball right there i love doing the grass shadow because all you do is this you do these little dashes under the player see this and folks there you go that is the you draw it for today fun we are going to move on to a little art vocab. We haven't done this in a while, so it's very important that we do it. 
People talk about abstract art all the time, but abstract art, I mean, that's a catch-all for all kinds of stuff. What is abstract expressionism? You probably heard people talk about this before. This is a very specific movement in art and a group of artists who called themselves abstract expressionists. Um, starting in New York City, this is in the 1950s when this, this uh, kind of started. You had um, folks like Jackson Pollock, you had folks like Willem de Kooning, um, who were making this a more popular art form, uh, a way of expressing oneself, I should say. Uh, what we're looking at here is a drawing by de Kooning, in fact. And the reason I selected this drawing to show everybody today is because um, one of the things about abstract expressionism is this idea that you're going to use expressive mark making. Okay, and when we talk about abstract expressionism, we're saying that we're not necess necessarily uh, drawing something representational or working from life, right? But that doesn't mean that you aren't alluding to something real in the mark making, in the drawing. And so for this drawing, I wanted to ask all of you out there, what do you see in the drawing? And if you see something specific, mention it in the chat. I'd love to see what it is that you think you see in this drawing, because there are two things that I see in my mind very clearly, um, but there might be some things I've missed. Um, and I'm curious to know what you see. And while you're thinking about this, I want you also to understand that even if you don't like this kind of work, this maybe doesn't appeal to you, um, if you've never tried making this kind of work, I highly recommend it because it is just so fun to go into a drawing like this where you have no pressure and no expectations and really the joy of simply using the medium to make marks on the canvas or on the paper and draw is what it's all about. And there's an emotional connection there to that activity. And the abstract expressionists were hoping that whatever emotions they were putting into that work would be conveyed to the viewer. So let's see, we have a man and a cow, says Tina Marie. Tina Marie, that's what I see. I, th I think it's a man and a bull. That's kind of what I see. Um, Steve says, like a horse auction. Yeah, maybe so. A deer, maybe someone peeking. Yes, yeah, so we see, I mean, this to me is a hand. We have an eye there. Something maybe legs, right? Or this could be the back legs of an animal. I, maybe these could be shoes right here. Looks like those could be heels. This to me definitely looks like the, like the head of a bull or a cow. Maybe some other part of the body of the animal. Um, right, and so you can do this kind of work and you don't, you don't have to show it to anybody. Just do it for fun or maybe you, you wind up with a really good drawing. I mean, look, these folks wound up in art museums for this stuff. Um, it's not personally my favorite thing. Everyone has different tastes. But I do appreciate what goes into it and the thought behind it and just the enjoyment of making these marks because I myself love that kind of stuff. I love the act of drawing. So there's your art vocab, abstract expressionism. By the way, there were two camps here. You had, you had two different sort of, there was a split. You had the abstract expressionists who were the action painters. That's like Pollock and people like that. Like quick gesture roll, expressive mark making. You also had the color field painters who did these very simple designs, very very neat, simple, not always neat, but simple designs with limited color or big, big large uh, patches of color in their work that were just flat, solid color. Um, those were more sort of gentle in their approach and they would kind of evoke a mood, if you will. So there you go. Time for the animal and activity game, gang. You have to suggest for me an animal doing something strange, funny, weird, bizarre, unexpected. Pardon me. Before we get to that, we do have to, of course, have Appreciation Station. Um, now, today we are appreciating our good friend Tina Marie. Just talking to you, Tina, just a second ago. Don't know if you remember this, but we were actually coaching the women's U.S. field hockey team back in the day. And we were traveling a lot. And, well, all of their field hockey sticks got lost in transit when we were on our way to Sweden. I thought we were going to have to forfeit the match but you always travel with your chainsaw and you got right to work with some lumber and started making new sticks for the players just 48 hours before our match. And then the craziest thing happened. You walked into the forest and a few minutes later you came back and you had brought this whole colony of beavers with you and they were helping to make it as well, to make the, the field hockey sticks. First of all, I didn't know you could talk to animals. Incredible. Second of all, skill with the chainsaw, pretty impressive. Guess what? You made enough sticks, we got the game played, and we even won six to four. 
thank you so much for your quick thinking and for your skills with woodwork because uh, that was a pretty impressive thing. Thank you very much, Tina Marie. All right, now back to drawing. Remember, we are doing the animal and activity game. So in the chat, you have to suggest, suggest for me, please, an animal doing something funny, strange, weird, unexpected, bizarre. And examples of what we've done in the past are things like this. We've done an owl playing the banjo. We have done a monkey surfing. We have done a koala dancing ballet, a canary working in a coal mine. Um, just yesterday, we drew a gorilla flying a plane. It's always something fun. It's always something different. I'll grab my light blue color so that I can sketch whatever you suggest. And let's see what we can do in the remaining five minutes of the show. A bear building a house, an aardvark on a tricycle. Gosh, what does an aardvark look like? I don't even know. Um, a beaver with a chainsaw. Tina Marie, of course. Of course. Gosh. Just right away, I say, we got to do it. That's just, that's the obvious one, isn't it? That's the obvious one. All right, let's do it. Here he is. Give him like a, a nice plaid lumberjack shirt. And I'm um, going to draw, holding that uh, chainsaw there. Actually, let's get his eye a little closer there. I think that's better. And Beaver has more of like a... like that. And here is our chainsaw. And he is ready to work. All right, let us go ahead and um, knock our sketch back. And it looks like we have just two and a half minutes to draw. Can we do it? Let's see. I think we can. It's going to be a quick one, though, gang. It's going to be quick. Sometimes we race the clock in the old draw along show. But I'm confident we can do it.
Alrighty. And here he's got his work boots. And that's it, folks. Ah, we did it. I think we ran out of time almost. But hey, folks, thank you so much for watching the Draw Along Show. No Masterclass tomorrow. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remember to be kind. And I will say ciao for now.